How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family, I'm going to make it real juicy. I got to get into this. You know, this is real deep. And um, y'all may be surprised somewhat how I'm viewing um, this saga between Kanye West and Donald Trump. And um, we know that Trump is um, a habitual liar, you know. And um, Trump don't Trump will throw anyone under the bus. He's a he's a narcissist. What they call it? A malignant. I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Narcissist. I think that's like to the far far extreme. But the things that um, that's awful to see is, you know, there, you know, even though this is a meme, we have seen pictures of Kanye and Trump all lovey-dovey and hugging up. And the only reason why um, Trump would even get him somewhat of a seat at the door, because that's how Trump is perceiving himself, because of the coins and the notoriety that Wes um, portrays, you know. And I feel like Wes is not in full reality sometimes by the type of company that he keep. But, you know, these coons out here, they get their, unquote, nigga moment. And so we're going to go on this journey and, and, um, and all of that. So, you know, I like to use satire. <clears throat> so when Kanye said what he said to Trump, and we, we're going to rehear it and all, the image, the image of this Trump was being true to his unquote nature. Because he felt some kind of way because of this statement. So let's check this out. I think the thing that Trump was most perturbed about, me asking him to be my vice president, I think that was like lower on the list of things that caught him off guard. It was the fact that I walked in with intelligence. So Trump is really impressed with Nick Fuentes. And Nick Fuentes, unlike so many of the lawyers and so many people that he was left with on his 2020 campaign, he's actually a loyalist. When he didn't know what the lawyers is, you'll still have your lawyer list. And when all the lawyers said, forget it, Trump's done, there are loyalists running up in the White House, right? And my question would be, why, when you had the chance, did you not free the January Sixers? And I came to him as someone who loves Trump, and I said, go and get Corey back. Go and get these people that the media tried to cancel and told you to step away from. He basically gives me this would-be mob-esque kind of story talking to some kid from the south side of Chicago trying to sound mobby or whatever. He goes into the story about all that he went through to get Alice Johnson out of jail, how he didn't do it for Kim, but he did it for me. But then he goes on to say that Kim is a You could tell her I said that. And I was thinking like, that's the mother of my children. Since we know, and all the Christians in America that love Trump know that Trump is a conservative, we're going to demand that you hold all policies directly to the Bible. When Trump started basically screaming at me at the table telling me I was going to lose, I mean, has that ever worked for anyone in history? <laughs> You're going to lose. Tell I'm him gonna he's going to lose. lose. Tell him. I'm like, well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> Trump. You're talking to Ye. All right. All right, so we, and I know some of y'all have seen some of this, but we are getting a um, a full more picture because he was brutally honest. And I do agree with um, what he has said. So Trump is taking a, um, I guess, a new approach because he wants to run for president because, you know, it kills him that he is losing 
on the world stage. Now, one thing that I want to point out is that um, I know Kanye has been told um, about Trump being basically full of total shit. And he needs to ha need for this to happen. But is he fully absorbing the enemy? You know, some folks, when they get coins, they get grandiose. And the enemy don't, you know, they true to their nature. And that's something that disturbs me about some of us that we we will reject our nature reject cuz they leave no doubt who and what they continue to be who and what they continue to be now even though i'm using satire and, and all these things we're going to get a little bit more deeper into this so let's see what these folks have to say Former President Trump had room at his table at Mar-a-Lago for not one, but two of the most prominent anti-Semitic figures in the country this week. The first, Ye, the rapper formerly known as Kanye West, who has spent the last several months spreading vile anti-Semitic tropes on social media and in interviews. And the second is this man, Nick Fuentes, 24-year-old founder of the group America First Political Action Committee. He has emerged recently is one of the most prominent and outspoken white supremacists. He attended both the January 6th and Charlottesville rallies, and he is an unabashed Holocaust denier. Trump spent the holiday weekend, though, on social media trying to explain away the gathering, claiming to not know Fuentes and minimizing West's uh, anti-Semitism. But according to CNN, a source said that Trump appreciated Fuentes' knowledge of his base and found him, quote, very interesting. And at one point, the source said, Trump declared that he liked Fuentes. West had his own version of events. I think the thing that Trump was most perturbed about, me asking him to be my vice president, I think that was like lower on the list of things that caught him off guard. It was the fact that I walked in with intelligence. So Trump is really impressed with Nick Fuentes. And Nick Fuentes, unlike so many of the lawyers and so many people that he was left with on his 2020 campaign, he's actually a loyalist. When he didn't know where the lawyers is, you'll still have your lawyer list. It is only just the latest example of Trump forging ties with individuals who have racist or extremist views and his lack of willingness to condemn this stuff over and over again. But, Mario, today I think what is striking is the deafening silence among Republicans about this. Uh, yet again, here we are, and Trump is just opening the doors to these uh, vile characters, and Republicans, the elected ones, aren't saying anything. No, there. This is a, we've seen this movie before, right? They try to bury their heads in the sand. When Trump was back on Twitter actively years ago, and we would approach him in the halls of Congress, asking, ask, excuse me, appro uh, approach the lawmakers in the halls of Congress, asking if they saw the tweet. They didn't see the tweet that everybody else saw. They didn't want to hear it. They want to just ignore this right now. But the problem for Trump, I mean, a. The, the reboot's never as good as the original, right? He's trying to catch fire in a bottle with his 2016 run. It's just, I was down in Mar-a-Lago for the rollout of his announcement. It just didn't have the same pizzazz that you could think, that you figure that he was shooting for. And then he's also, I mean, he, he the donors are, are fleeing him left and right. This is, this is sure not to bring him back also as well. So... This is a, a terrible moment for the former president's rollout. His, his um, former imba U.S. ambassador to uh, Israel, David Friedman, tweeted this. To my friend Donald Trump, you are better than this. Even a social visit from an anti-Semite like Car C Kanye West and human scum like Nick Fuentes is unacceptable. I urge you to throw these bums out, disavow them, and relegate them to the dustbin of history where they belong. That is a pretty strong statement, but the question is, I mean, given all that Trump has said and done, I mean, is he really better than what we are seeing here? 
I, I th look, when somebody shows you who they are, you should believe them. And, and Trump has shown us time and time again where he stands on these kinds of things, uh, taking days to disavow David Duke, uh, you know, the, the former KKK Klansman who uh, expresses support for Trump. And you have to remember with Trump, his fundamental rule, the way that he operates, if somebody likes me, yes. I like them. And that's and it. It doesn't matter, it doesn't who, matter they who they are. It doesn't matter if they're anti-Semitic. The it doesn't matter if they're racist. That is the bar for Trump every single time. And you also know, when you look at these denials from Trump, when there is a blatant lie in them, you know that the whole thing is BS. Because Trump here says he, that Kanye West unexpectedly showed up with three of his friends. Nick Fuentes, but one of the friends was Karen Giorno, who ran Trump's Florida who campaign in 2016, him. who yeah. I know very well, who Trump knew very well on site. So, you know, it's just... It, and, and then there's the issue of Trump himself, of course, has also spewed anti-Semitism in the past, including very recently when he suggested that American Jews are essentially not grateful enough towards him because of his support for Israel, going on that anti-Semitic trope of, of dual loyalty of, of American Jews. I just want to put people to understand here in this Nick Fuentes situation. This is someone who, I mean, ha has some degree of fame in the very dark right-wing corners on the internet, but to understand the vileness of it all, he, he attended the Charlottesville rally, said a tidal wave of white identity is coming. He says the U.S. has a white demographic core that's central to, his, to its identity. He says he is just like Hitler and that the real Holocaust was Jesus Christ being crucified. Uh, notably, though, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who we were just discussing, Congressman Paul Gosar, spoke at his white supremacist conference in the past. And both of those people are uh, members of the Republican he's, Party and he's a good standing. power broker yeah. now in, in the House Republican conference. This is a, this, uh, Nick Fuentes is a very much a known quantity. Yes, he's, he inhabits the darker corners of the internet, but he also inhabits the House floor now. So because, because of his, um, th these individuals that have appeared at his conference. So, um, these, it, there has been this permission structure created by the Republican Party to not cast individuals like Nick Fuentes, you know, back to the dark And doesn't this tell us so much about and, what, what a Trump term would look like, too? Like, no vetting of people, just like anti-Semites, Holocaust deniers walking through the door? I mean, it, it tells us everything. But exactly. But because of the silence that Abby mentioned at the beginning of this segment, that's why this continues, because there is no one in the Republican Party who with any sort of power that's willing to stand up and rebuke him. Now the question is, should other people get into the presidential race if this is something that's called out by some of the potential challengers um, of, of the former president? I mean, this is all tracking with exactly the Trump that we know, and it all tracks with Marjorie Taylor Greene. This is all the same stuff we've been seeing for years. This is like, to me, there's nothing surprising about any of this. The only thing that stood out to me about this meeting was with President Trump and Kanye and, and Nick Fuentes and then the Marjorie Taylor Greene connection, the thing that really stood out to me was the absurdity of it all because I could I only wish I could have watched Kanye West turn to Trump and say, I'm running for president. Would you like to be my vice president? And just watch that one blow up because that is not the thing that Trump wants to hear at all. If you are a Republican right now, right? Uh, they are watching this slow-moving train moving forward. And, and Trump, he's announced that he's running again in 2024. Um, the, the base of the party seems to be, to some extent, right there with him. Just look at this poll, this Quinnipiac poll, about asking whether Trump running for president is a bad thing. Democrats uh, say it's a bad thing, 88%. Uh, independents, 58%, say it's a bad thing. Republicans, 27%. So. Uh, majority of Republicans are, are fine with it, but independents are not there. And if you are a Republican and you want to win, that should be a red flag. And that's the that's the issue, right? I mean, we're, we're fresh off of a midterm election where Trumpism was repudiated by many of the voters, right? All, many of his election deniers, they lost. Uh, many of his candidates that he endorsed, they lost as well. So independent voters are showing no appetite for a Trump 2.0 run again. 
even as parts of the base agitate and stay behind him. And so Republicans have to figure out how they're going to forcefully cut the cut the, the, the cord with former President Donald Trump here if they want to win. Yeah, I mean, and it, it strikes me as uh, a lot of chatter quietly about whether or not other people are going to run, but it's going to come down to making some tough decisions that it can't be a field of 20 people like it was mm -hmm. the last time. Well, I, I will say that um, when, whenever we've asked on the Hill, we've gone up to Republican senators and said, oh, what do you think of Trump announcing he's running for president right now? Good idea? And w either they don't want to talk about it, or if they do talk about it, they'll say, well, you know, he, it's not my decision, it's his decision. But I, I also think that there's this guy, Ron DeSantis. <laughs> so have you heard of Ron DeSantis? Ron DeSantis. There's, there's a guy named Ron DeSantis in Florida who maybe he might run. And you can see they're, like, desperately trying to weave through the Trump mess and somehow end up at Ron DeSantis. They really, in some way, want to get to him already, even though here we trying. are in, in November of 2022, and Ron DeSantis has not announced because it's so early, but they're like desperately trying to get there. But what they're also trying to do is they're trying to avoid doing what they have to do, which is dismantling the lie of Trump's appeal to his base, right? Dismantling mm -hmm. the, the lies that he's told about his business life, in politics, <laughs> and dismantling this kind of aura and this hold that he has over that base. Until they're willing to push back on the crazy, I don't see how you can make an argument against um, you know, what Trump is running on. So, I thought it was important to, um, to interject that and how I'm perceiving what's really going down, and let me take some of this stuff down, um, how this is really going down. You see down here at the bottom, self promotion yeah i gotta throw some satire in it too at the end of the day but um in that arena in that world negative and positive or positive or negative um attention it doesn't matter because we know trump doesn't it doesn't matter if he get um negative behavior because how he um how people perceive him because it does and it don't with trump um and it depends on who it is but you know trump wants to stay relevant and then kanye ain't no fool um because he's in the entertainment field um he he knows that he can capitalize off of trump we know that kanye will not be the president we already know that it's surprising that Trump became the president, um, but it is what it is at the end of the day. But don't let these billionaires fool you. Um, it's all about self-promotion, getting it one way or the other. People are going to listen in on their fuckery and their foolishness and all of that thing, whatever you may disdain or whatever you may admire or like or anything about these um, useless candidates at the end of the day in the stunts that they um, promote. But it's still a long time, you know, and throwing in your hat in an arena so early, life happens at the end of the day. So my royal family, this is really technically the first video I have done in a long time. So do what you do best. Render your voice with your beautiful divine words. And as always, my royal family, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your support. And with that said, Ashe.